Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Well, they say it's going to be clear skies tonight, so thank goodness for that. Um, and maybe tomorrow night as well, although I better not speak too soon because anything can happen, but um, here's hoping. Um, now look, down here in the Southern Hemisphere, we're in a little bit of an in-between time. We don't have a true galaxy season, a nebula season like they have in the Northern Hemisphere. We do get nebula that we can um, image throughout the year. Um, because we get quite a good view of a lot of the Milky Way most of the year. But during this time now, there is a, a period where a lot of nebula are either leaving or they're arriving. And what that means is that by the time it's dark now to image around about 9.30, a lot of uh, nebula are heading down to the horizon and then the next lot coming up are not rising until after about midnight and really not worth imaging till about two in the morning where they get high enough. So um, there's this period where you sit there and go, well, if I'm gonna image between sort of 10 and one o'clock in the morning or 10 and two in the morning, what can I what can I shoot? So I thought I'd have a go at a galaxy for, for a change. I've been doing a lot of imaging of nebulae, nebula, nebulas, whichever you wanna say it. Um, and it's been a while since I've done a galaxy. So, one of um, our brightest um, galaxies, and one that's a decent size to image, is the Sculptor Galaxy. And uh, that is 13 million light years away. It's an intermediate spiral galaxy, and it's also known as the Starburst Galaxy because of the amount of star formation that's going on inside it. So, nice bright target. Um, and so I thought, well, I'll capture it um, with some RGB and also some HA. Now I have captured it before, um, not with HA, just RGB with a 10 inch mead and probably that's what I should be imaging it with at the moment but I don't really have a decent setup yet with a 10 inch. I'm waiting for some more um, equipment to arrive to turn that into a much better imaging scope. So I'm going to stick with the Skywatcher Esprit 120. Now it has an 840mm focal length. So it's not really ideal for galaxies, they're, they're a little bit small in the field of view, but I'm hoping that this will be enough that I can perhaps crop the image a bit and still pick up some nice colour, nice detail, and importantly some HA. So that's my plan, um, and uh, as I said, here's hoping it stays clear, and um, we'll uh, get things all cool down in the observatory and wait till dark. So Nina's been running for a while, as you can see there's uh, quite a few frames down the bottom right hand corner, they're all the green filter, I have been collecting the other filters as well. And we're currently on the HA filters, the first, there it is, there's the first image um, of this run. Now the HA filter obviously doesn't have as much detail and isn't as bright as the um, other filters but that's to be expected as I am just using uh, this to highlight the areas of nebulosity in the Sculptor um, Galaxy. So I'll just um, carry on um, collecting data for as long as I can and hopefully I'll have enough that I can actually start on processing the final image. The um, guiding tonight's been pretty good, around 0.66. It has been a little better than that at times, it's been a little worse at times, but overall uh, it's been relatively steady and the stars appear to be all around in the images I've collected so far. So um, yeah, we'll just keep, keep going. Right, so we're in Pixon site, and here is the, the blue filter stack, this is the green, and this is the red. You can see it's a nice bright galaxy, so um, lots and lots of uh, signal from that. And I also did an HA here. Now just compare this with the red, you can see the red has picked up a lot more um, a signal from the galaxy um, naturally because uh, this is a 7 nanometer optimal narrowband filter and what this is obviously picking more up is the um, areas of nebulosity in the galaxy and it's these areas here that we want to add to the red to really make them pop in the um, final color image. You can see they are there to a certain extent but we really want to enhance them with the with the HA. So the way to do this is um, 
you want to, and I know this sounds a little bit odd, I want to use pixel math and um, use a formula here for ex that's called extract um, or isolate HA. What that means is there is a sort of more signal that's picking up here. You can see there's some sort of pale stuff in the background and I don't really want to pick that up in a lot of the core. I don't want to pick up a lot of that signal and add it to the red because I think it'll just oversaturate it. I just want to pick up these very bright areas of HA signal to enhance the red. So this formula will do that, but you do have to play around with the, the numbers here quite a bit. Now when I got this, um, when I found this originally, and I can't remember whether I got this off a YouTube channel or a video, um, a, a website, sorry, because I, I have had this um, sitting here for a while, um, which I think I used previously on my um, Southern Pinwheel Galaxy image to enhance the red areas. That was a different camera, that was the ASI 1600 MM Pro. Now I don't know whether it's, I'm, I'm presuming it's related to the camera that I've had to change these numbers quite dramatically um, because the filter filters are the same. I haven't changed those, but if I, when I originally got this, it was set at a value of 80. And if I just use 80 and throw that on here and stretch this, um, it really doesn't do anything. If you compare these two, um, I really haven't isolated anything. So you do need to play around with this number, uh, the 80. I ended up going all the way back to 20, and that seemed to work the best f for me for this image. So if I now use 20 and put that on there, hit the stretch, now you can see that it really has uh, left behind all of this brighter background and we really have just been left with the bright areas of nebulosity. There's a bit in the core there as well but that's okay. Um, now there is this funny artifact around the stars, don't worry when you actually combine it back with your red using another pixel math formula, um, it doesn't seem to have an effect. Um, the other thing I did was because I didn't really want to add all the information from the background here, I just wanted this, I actually used a custom mask to isolate just the galaxy so that I was adding it only to the galaxy and I'll show you what I did there. But So this gives you a, um, a, a new image called New HA. You can take that HA and uh, minimize it. Then the next thing I want to do is use another formula here called Add HA. And here it is here. Now when I again originally had this it was set at a value of five i understand this is some sort of boost factor and uh, i really did not need that it boosted it something awful here is um and again i guess related to this camera here is the red and if we um you can see new ha we are going to add to this to enhance it but if i use a factor of five um sorry I'm just, I've got to get rid of the mask here, remove mask, um, if I, oh sorry there's a one on here, let's get rid of the one, because we're not using, I had done another version with a one on it, because um, this one here is just called new HA, so it's just new HA. Uh, if I throw that on there you end up with this, which is a, an awful mess. So. Uh, again, I played around with this number here and I found bring it back to one. If I throw that onto here, it has increased a bit of the sort of noise in the background here. Um, so that's why I actually, using the game tool under here, game, I actually made a custom mask that was an ellipse, just the shape of the galaxy. So throw that on there. And if we do mask, show mask, you can see just the galaxy is now highlighted that we can uh, manipulate and the background is all protected. So I'll just get rid of that. I'm just going to zoom in a bit to show you what this does. So we're going to take this and we are going to be adding this here, this new HA to our red. And I'll just throw that on there and see how that suddenly pops up all the signal. Now there is a bit of extra noise here um, but we don't really need to worry about that because 
you can either denoise, do some denoise, or you, I, as I did at the end, I did convolution to blur the whole thing because I was really just after the color. It was the luminance that um, I use for my detail anyway. So, um, but if we just go backwards and forwards, you can see how much this um, HA signal has really been enhanced in the in the galaxy. So. Um, I'll just put that aside for a minute. So that's how you add the HA to the to the red channel. And obviously, um, I'll just show you here. This is if I just did um, an RGB combination of the galaxy without the HA, and I'll just zoom in here a bit to this arm for comparison. There is a tiny bit of pink here. It's probably hard to see, but there is a little bit of a tiny amount of pink that you probably could enhance, but um, we really want this to stand out so that is just with RGB combination this is with what I call the which is called obviously the HA RGB combination because we've added the HA to the red channel and this is what you end up with and you can see there is a lot more HA signal here to to really come out in your final image so that works really nicely um, what I did with this one because I actually didn't take any um, luminance um, images with a luminance filter to stack so I took a lazy option um, I just did a, a extracted a luminance from this um, from from this sort of HA RGB combination and um, use that for my luminance now this is obviously all done um, this is all unstretched so then you go ahead and um, stretch the image uh, and then process as you like for whatever colors you want so this is um, here unstretched and I'm just sort of stretching it here and we'll just bring it up a bit you can see now we're stretched and you can see the nice red nebulosity in here and then it's just a matter of going through the usual of you know curves and um, getting the color you want the brightness you want etc the noise denoise as I said at the end I'll show you here I actually did a convolution here to blur it because I was going to use the luminance to add to that to bring out the the um, the detail and that also gets rid of the noise by blurring it um, this is the luminance here that was extracted and then stretched and then I did my usual to enhance the the detail using some HDR and some local histogram equalization and a bit of sharpening. And then combine that with um, this um, uh, color component. Um, and then a little bit more work with curves, etc. And a, a little bit of work in Photoshop, not that much to be honest and um, ended up with this uh, final image of the Sculptor Galaxy NGC 253.